we have here another era that we get to, actually two different eras. So here is Tunnel 6, the longest of the 15 Sierra Tunnels, 1,659 feet long. They went through it from four directions at a time, doing and working at it inches a day, hauling out the rock by hand, carrying it out this way, and dropping it on the other side of uh, Tunnel 7 over there. Tunnel 7 used to have rock over the top, but when the railroad was coming through here, something we don't think about, the size of locomotives got bigger, the size of cars got bigger, and eventually they took the top off. And what they did for Tunnel 6 was they lowered it a couple of feet. So if you go to walk through Tunnel 6, you know, just as you get to the entrance, look to the left and the right, you see a very clear ridge. And that's where they lowered the bottom of the tunnel to facilitate uh, larger size cars. But this is an interesting spot here. So let me pass this particular, now don't just get rid of this picture right away. Look at it closely for a minute. You're standing right here in this area. You are looking out from up above on the rock here. You're looking down at buildings sitting on top of the railroad track. Now, consider this. Some of you will be surprised. Theodore Judah laid out the route of the railroad. It was a masterful stroke. He looked at five different routes in different areas of the Sierra, looking for the way to get across. And he chose this way because the ridges go east-west, coming up this west side of, on the west side of the mountains. And so they could work their way up easily to Donner Summit and could work his way down the other side. He came up here and he read, did a lot of research after he figured out what the route would be. He studied the trees, and he looked at how high the branches were, and he looked at where they started, and he looked at which side the moss was and where the moss started, and he looked at the trees and saw where sawyers, woodcutters, had cut the trees off, and he said, you know, on Donner Summit, this was part of his congressional report in 1863, he said, snow's not a problem on Donner Summit. <laughs> All we need to do, and all of the railroad builders were from back east, and back east it would snow and melt off, and it would snow, you know, it wouldn't snow very much at a time. And uh, so he thought, well, a little bit of snow would fall here, and even if a bunch did, why, we just blast through with our uh, engines and it would knock the snow off. Well, they hadn't even finished the railroad when they discovered that snow is a problem. And one of the first solutions was they built big bucker plows huge, monstrous machines that weighed many, many tons. They didn't have snow plows that came to a point. They had kind of a scoop and then shot the snow off to the side. And those bucker plows, they would hook up to as many as 10 locomotives. And those 10 locomotives would charge full speed down the track up to 65 miles an hour and blast into the snow. <laughs> I don't like to see that. The snow up here is called Sierra cement for a reason. It would stop those bucker plows. They couldn't go any further. So then they would back up and ram at it again, back, and sometimes they would derail. They hadn't even finished the, uh, the railroad in 1869 before they started building snow sheds. That's what that picture is that we passed around. That snow shed on top of the track, eventually there would be 40 miles of snow shed. Notice there are little chimneys along there to let the smoke out. Now, we've got not such great weather here today. I mean, it's great for hiking, but for viewing, it's not so great. But imagine how excited you are. You're going to come west for the first time in your life. It's a huge event. You're going to get all dressed up. You're going to ride on the Pullman car, and then you're going to ride on the Central Pacific's version of the Pullman car. You're going to see the most wonderful sights in the world, right? And then you're going to get to San Francisco. So you're coming through uh, Nevada in a hot desert and so forth. And then you get to Truckee Meadows, which is Reno. And then you work your way up the canyon to Truckee. And then you hit the most beautiful scenery in the world. Except you're in a snowshed. And a dark, smoky railroad car. And you can't see anything. Except the occasional crack as you go past. Right? So you get that view of what kids make when they flip cars and they have those little uh, rotating... I forget what they're called. Now, uh, when you turn the book and the little people oh, well, there's it. that too. Yeah. So anyway, that picture is for this spot. You can see all the iron into the rock there. 
because when they first built those snow sheds, that picture is the very first ones. They didn't work because they had peak grooves and snow would get trapped and avalanches would knock them over. So they bolted them to the rock and that didn't work. So then they built slanting ones and they built flat roofed ones and then they hired hundreds of snow shovelers to keep the snow off the flat, flat roofs. Scenery wasn't the only problem and snow knocking them over wasn't the only, wasn't the second, the only second problem. They also had a problem with fire because they were made of wood and they sat in the summer baking and the trains coming through threw off sparks and they would light those snow sheds on fire and miles would go in one evening. So they developed telescoping, telescoping snow sheds where a hundred yards of a snow shed would roll over the other one and create a fire break. Next time you're going down the freeway and you go, uh, you go uh, past Cisco, and look up to the right. That's Red Mountain. It used to be called Signal Peak and you know, or Signal Mountain, and you know why. But there was also, or there still is, a stone building up there where they had railroad workers, two of them, and they would keep an eye on all 40 miles of snow sheds. And when they saw smoke, they'd pick up the phone and call Cisco. One of the first telephones in the entire country was installed from the top of Snow Mount, I mean, Red Mountain to Cisco. Then the guy at Cisco would answer the phone, telegraph to the fire train. The fire train, the two of them were kept up here, always with a full head of steam, would race as fast as they could down to try to put out the fire before too many miles of snow sheds went. But that's not, that's all that's in that picture. The reason we came to stand over here is because you notice that building on there is wider than the crowd. <clears throat> the Dutch Flat Wagon Road came right down through here. Right down through these trees, right through here. And it came into the snow sheds, traveled through the snow sheds to where the tunnel is, and then out on the right side, and we can see the Dutch Flat Wagon Road. Yeah, yeah. That is also going to be the stock trail. It's also going to be a county road. And it's also going to become part of the Lincoln Highway, although for not very long. So imagine you're coming up here. Let me pass this picture around. Imagine you're coming up here on your automobile and you are going to want to cross the railroad tracks. So what you did was you drove up and there was a big sliding barn door there. You turned off your engine so you could hear. You slid open the barn door. You listened for any trains coming. You hopped across the track. You walked all the way along here to the barn door here, opened this one, then you came back through, listen for the train, no, nope, start up your engine again, try to get across the tracks before the next train comes, drive through and out on the other side. Now, imagine some drivers you know. Were there any accidents? Apparently there were, and we're going to see what the solution now was in a couple of hundred yards here. But let's go back to the, uh, to the Dutch Flat Wagon Road. Let me pass out. These are pictures of wagons on the Dutch Flat Wagon Road, somewhere right around here. These are freight wagons, some of those freight wagons that I talked about earlier, sitting right here. And they hauled something like 87 carloads of uh, material for a truckie, for the railroad, and for the Comstock load through here. The very first locomotives to come across the Sierra came right along this road, presumably. Remember they were in a race, and they were trying to get as many miles built as they could, but the Central Pacific is stuck on this stupid tunnel here. It's taking two years to get through. If we could only get to Nevada where it's flat, we could build like crazy. But they had to be contiguous miles. So, in the middle of winter, they put the locomotive, they all had names in those days, the San Mateo on a wagon, sledge, and they brought it up to Cisco, and they took it off the train at Cisco, put it on the sledge, and carried it up over Donner Summit here, down to Truckee, in the middle of winter. Was it intact or in pieces? Can't That's a good question. <laughs> we don't have any good evidence of it. We have newspaper articles that they hauled the San Mateo over. They also hauled over that first time 40 miles of track and the parts for railroad cars that were assembled in there. 
There was a silent movie put together in 1925 that showed them hauling it. Their view was they hauled it over one feet. They brought all the Chinese workers on it. But they don't show the snow, so that's wrong, because it came over in the snow. <clears throat> then they hauled two more locomotives over the following year, and another 40 miles of track, and more railroad cars. That came right through here. Now, where exactly it went, we don't know, except the Dutch Flat Wagon Road was here. The Dutch Flat Wagon Road, though, was really quite narrow, sharp turns, and in winter, the snow is really steep, right? So, my thought is, if you go up the PCT and you look off to the right-hand side, you see excavation there. We also know that that was the main wagon route after Roller Pass. That became a freight route until the Dutch Flat Wagon Road came along. It could be that the, the locomotives and the car parts and the rails went over that. Because when they hauled the locomotive to be the donkey engine at the top of the central shaft, it was so huge that when they took it off, and it did come in pieces, they took it off in Gold Run. It took six weeks to get to Donner Summit. And as it came up the Dutch Flat Wagon Road, it was such a scary sight to the oncoming mules that they would bolt. So they had to blindfold the mules so they couldn't see it. Well, if that's the case, and that happened before the San Mateo came over, and we know that the snow really obliterates the road here, wouldn't they have taken the old road that went up Cold Stream and down the other side? There's no documentation because they didn't write down daily stuff in those days. They haven't uncovered, they haven't cataloged all of the Central Pacific archives down at the Railroad Museum yet. And so, in our lifetimes, we may never know.